I've had a number of people ask about the variable power supply I use in my electronics videos, so I thought I'd make a video to show how I built it and explain some critical things to be aware of. This isn't really a how-to video, so if you're new to this, make sure to watch some more thorough tutorials about how to handle opening high voltage devices. They can still be dangerous even when they're unplugged. I started off with an ATX power supply from a desktop computer. The ATX standard came out in 1995, so these have been made for nearly 30 years. They're absolutely everywhere and they're being thrown away all the time as people upgrade. If you find a used desktop PC, chances are it has a power supply that closely matches the one I used. The basics of an ATX power supply are AC input from the wall and DC output at 3.3, 5, and 12 volts. The one I used was called a 300 watt unit, but you can see most of the power goes to the 12 volt output. They all have standard interface cables for the motherboard, so it's easy to tell what each wire is for. There is 20 pin and 24 pin versions, but the 24 pin just has an extra wire for each of 3.3, 5, 12 volts, and ground, also called common. The wires are conveniently color coded as well, so the first thing I did was cut off the motherboard connector and gather all of the light colored wires together. Yellow is 12 volts, red is 5 volts, orange is 3.3 volts, and black is ground. The green wire is called PS on, and it, like it sounds, the power supply turns on when that green wire is grounded. The gray wire is called power OK, PWR OK, and it will have a 5 volt signal on it once the voltage outputs for the rest of the power supply are within tolerance. So what I did is I crimped one of the black wires to the green wire, in effect making the rear switch into a true on-off switch, and I wired the gray wire to a green LED. The power supply limits the current, so you don't even need a resistor. That LED later I put in the front of the power supply case so that I could see when power was uh, within tolerance. Also on the case, I installed banana receptacles uh, for each of the three power rails, along with a ground for each one. I combined the wires for each voltage into bundles and soldered them onto the back of the banana receptacles. This takes some heat, so I recommend a Weller style soldering gun and lots of flex. I also recommend sliding some heat shrink tubing down the bundle first so you can slide it over the joint when finished. So now I had a functioning power supply with 3.3, 5, and 12 volt outputs. The variable power comes from a second power supply that I actually installed inside of the ATX power supply. It's called a buck boost converter. I initially used one from a company called Rui Dang, and the model is the DPH3205. It feeds off the 12 volt rail and then outputs constant current or constant voltage from 0 to 32 volts and up to 5 amps. The hardest part was figuring out where I could mount the control panel and the actual buck boost circuit along with two more banana plugs. Once I figured out the mounting, the wiring was easy. I wired the input to the 12 volt rail and ground on the ATX power supply and then I connected the output to dedicated banana plugs protruding from the top of the ATX power supply case, just above the place where I mounted the variable control panel. As a bonus, I wired up two 5 volt USB outlets, but I never really used those. The setup worked so well for me that when I came across a 600 watt power supply that just needed a new fan, I also went through the similar steps and set it up for just dedicated higher current 12 volt duty, no variable power supply added onto it. Using the variable power supply, eventually I connected the outputs backwards to an 18 volt battery. I could hear the pop and suddenly no more power output at all. So I took the buck boost board out of the ATX case and looked all over for burn components. I desoldered all sorts of things and tested them one by one, but I couldn't find any problem. Uh, also, since my original conversion, this had been a couple years, and Rui Ding had come out with a higher voltage model in the same form factor. It's called the DPH5005, and it could boost up to 50 volts. So I bought one of those. Uh, I didn't even swap the controller. I just put the DPH5005 buck boost circuit into the original mounting location where I had the DPH3205 uh, originally. And I connected the original wires to the controller, and everything just worked. But then eventually I connected its outputs backwards as well. This time it was to a 40 volt battery, so same pop. Uh, but fortunately, no smoke. This time I hooked up the buck boost circuit outside of the ATX case and I saw what I hadn't seen before, an LED. I quickly found out that the LED was meant to signal when the nearby fuse was blown. I had never seen this LED before because I had never powered the board up outside of the ATX case with a blown fuse. The fuse was really easy to locate. It was right next to the LED and a continuity test quickly confirmed that it was bad. 
So I ordered a new fuse from DigiKey, and a few days later I received it, soldered it on, and everything worked again. I also went ahead and repaired my older DPH 3205 that I had sitting in the drawer, because why throw away anything? And it, had, it simply had a blown fuse as well, so it was back in business. So if I wanted to get fancy, I could wire up another LED on the face of the ATX case to the LED uh, connection that's on the bug boost converter circuit board, and that would indicate to me when the fuse is blown. But I think I'll just continue to try and avoid connecting the leads backwards. And if I do hear a pop, well, I have several extra fuses, so I'm ready. Hopefully this quick overview is helpful to anyone who is interested in building their own variable power supply. This one has been super useful to me, and if this video was useful to you, well, consider hitting that like button. But in any case, thanks for watching.